Well, um, as uh, as a response to this um, uh, crisis, uh, COVID-19 crisis, which shut down sport all around the world, PIVA de- had to develop a number of initiatives and uh, uh, to try to keep our membership engaged during those difficult times. And uh, we uh, <clears throat> did a lot of effort <clears throat> to practically stay connected with our national federations, <clears throat> with our athletes, with our coaches, officials, and all the membership. Uh, difficult time where we could not uh, do our regular activities, we used to develop uh, alternative uh, programs, which should help us to uh, be ready for post-COVID period, to become stronger in some areas where we maybe were not that strong in the past, and to use this time to learn to engage and also to develop. So I'm really happy to present today one of our initiatives, which is quite um, specific. Uh, That was the first time FIBA did something like this. And uh, to start with, um, I would like to ask the colleagues in the the studio just to start uh, the video, which will um, present a quick summary of the key elements of our initiative called Skills Challenge. Please go to the video. Next one. Two thousand and twenty, the year of the pandemic. The impact of COVID nineteen on international sport events has been massive. Uh, we agreed uh, to postpone uh, the uh, Olympic Games uh, Tokyo twenty twenty. The governing body of basketball, FIBA, had to quickly take decisions on its summer competitions. In May, the under-17 FIBA Basketball World Cups, FIBA's youngest category on a world stage, were postponed. It was a huge blow for these rising stars, set to play at that level for the first time. Players had fought to qualify and were excited to represent their countries. How could FIBA still bring this generation of players together and make youth national teams compete on the global level without international travel and contact between players? Here come the FIBA Under-17 Skills Challenges, an innovative global and digital competition encouraging national federations to bring their teams together and give the players the opportunity to represent their country within a global frame all in the backdrop of the current pandemic. A special skills drill executed by a team of five players as fast and accurately as possible and filmed locally. An opponent doing the same on the other side of the world. Two videos, two team scores. An unknown winner of each challenge revealed only once videos are combined and streamed on FIBA's digital channels. A success story with 92 teams taking part, over 200 challenges leading up to two thrilling finals and some special moments on social media. After some great performances and many close challenges, the first under 17 skills challenges champions were crowned. China for the girls and Mongolia for the boys. With one final surprise. Congratulations. A video call with Australian Olympic silver and bronze medalist, Jenny Screen, and one of the best power forwards to ever play the game, Dirk Nowitzki, celebrating the winners in a midst of curiosity and excitement. We don't know how long this pandemic will last and impact sports and our world as a whole. Until then, we'll be ready to innovate and find new opportunities for our stars of tomorrow. That's what the skills challenges are all about. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, we have um, successfully implemented this skills challenge under 17 skills challenge this year. And why under 17, why it is so important for this age category? Actually, uh, 17 years of age is the 
age when uh, young basketball talents will have a first opportunity to compete, to compete at a global level. So this is their first global experience. They managed to qualify for this competition and uh, it has a special meaning for them and for their future career. Of course, this event they, they will uh, never forget. And uh, unfortunately this year we had to cancel a lot of events. But when canceling this under 17, we really uh, felt um, that this is not the right thing, but we had to do that. Uh, we also received a lot of letters from national federations and from players who were actually asking, begging FIBA to find some, to find a way to provide them opportunity to compete. So this triggered the discussion on how to find alternative solution. And this is how we came to, idea, to the, idea, the idea to organize a skills challenge. So we wanted to provide to those kids who are losing uh, once in a lifetime experience to compete uh, at the global level for the first time. And at the same time, we wanted to um, encourage federations, motivate them to bring those kids together, although there will be no competition, no official competition, no, no World Cup, to bring the kids together and provide uh, quality training after the long pre period of uh, practically where, where those kids didn't have opportunity to, to train basketball. Also, uh, we uh, wanted to use this opportunity and also to use our digital platforms to promote those kids, although they will not be competing in the World Cup, but still we wanted to provide alternative solution. We had some positive experience with the skills challenge of different format uh, at some previous events, and we also had a very good experience of skills challenge, which is a regular part of our three other events. And we also uh, wanted to benefit of this, and uh, we also managed to find a solution to keep the costs of this uh, in initiative, the cost of skills challenge uh, at the acceptable level, which was very important in these difficult times when everyone also has a budget constraints at the same time. So this is why we decided to go for a skills challenge and just quickly what exactly the skills challenge is. Next slide, please. This is actually a, a, a virtual game which is produced by combining uh, uh, videos which are uh, filmed in different locations around the world. So we have uh, two teams competing. Each one of them is filming their uh, performance, sending to the editorial team, and they are combining two videos together and uh, practically uh, creating, creating the game. As you were able to see uh, on, the, on the video, uh, the, the opponents, the teams were able practically to, to see the result only at the moment when uh, the, the games were published on our social media. We also wanted to keep the national team component, so the teams were participating as a national teams. They, they were wearing uh, national team jerseys and they were all eligible national team players. So uh, we wanted really to emphasize this national team component. And uh, finally, uh, Initially, we wanted just to organize this competition for the teams who were already qualified for the, for the World Cup, under-17 World Cup. But then we realized when we are already doing all the logistics uh, around, we should actually provide this opportunity to as many teams as uh, we, we can have. So at the end, we opened the possibility to everyone who would like to compete around the world. And we had a real global challenge with the qualifiers at the continental level and the final round which then included also the teams which were qualified for the World Cup. Uh, on the next slide, you will just see a couple of numbers which are relevant for, for this um, initiative. So we went really global. Uh, we had uh, close to 50 national federations involved with the 200 plus skill challenges played and all, all together 92 national teams who participated in this challenge. 44 women's and 48 men teams. Everything was supported, please, next slide. Everything was supported by our uh, platforms. So on, on, on FIBA website, we created um, websites for, for skill challenges as we normally do for regular events. So it was, uh, uh, the, the competition was well, co well covered with, uh, with all the elements which are normally there for regular competitions. So those who participated really had a feeling that they really 
participate in the, in the global competition. But even more success, uh, next slide please, we had with the, with the digital channels, where both on FIBA, social media, but even more on social media participating countries, we had a lot of activation and uh, a, lot of, a lot of promotion, which, which I think was really uh, exceptionally important for, for those kids. Finally, last slide please. We wanted to provide to all participants uh, something that uh, they will remember for the rest of their life. So we actually managed to uh, send some uh, awards to all participants. So all of them received a letter from FIBA Secretary General and FIBA President and a really unique, um, uh, unique message from two megastars from Dirk Nowitzki and Jenny Screen, and also uh, some symbolic uh, mini basketball. So they, they, they remember uh, about this event for the rest of the life. Of course, the best teams receive um, uh, more valuable uh, awards and, and the best players and VPs receive so much. So I think for everyone involved, uh, this opportunity was uh, very much appreciated, especially for uh, the smaller federations who normally do not have opportunity to compete at a global level. But I think that everyone enjoyed and we in FIBA uh, really like this initiative.